And let me say good afternoon to everybody. And uh, we're in Northwest Houston uh, uh, today. I want to give a big thank you, a big thank you uh, to Pastor Connie Jackson of St. John Northwest Church uh, for this food drive. And Ricky Davis, this is the Ricky Davis, the guy, uh, along with the Ricky Davis uh, Legacy Foundation that's providing the supplies, the food, and along with Pastor Jackson, they are partnering up. And as you can see, there is a tremendous, a tremendous need in this city. Uh, we're dealing with a health care crisis, we're dealing with an economic crisis, and we're dealing with a food uh, uh, in, uh, security uh, crisis at the same time. So all three, all three in one. The good news, though, the good news, uh, there, there are people, there are organizations, there are faith-based organizations that are stepping up to meet the needs of the people in our city. So I want to I thank you, Rick. I want to thank you, Pastor Connie Jackson. You and I have known each other for a number of years, decades. decades. <laughs> I want to thank you and St. John Church. And quite frankly, let me just on a personal note, this particular location and what's happening here is right in my own backyard. This is where I grew up. I'm literally right down the street. So even in the area where the mayor lives, the need is very, very real. And I'm just so thankful. Let me just say for today, I mean, give this report because uh, this virus is still very much uh, alive and still uh, present within our community. We are reporting 183 new cases today. Uh, that will bring our count up to over 6,500 in the city of Houston. In that, in that count, that 183, uh, 77 of that 103 are coming from our homeless shelters. 77 coming from our homeless shelters. We are now testing people in our homeless shelters. And what we are finding is that there are people who are literally infected with this virus. And so we are engaged in social distancing with them and spreading them out to get on top of that. Uh, there, are, there are roughly three hot spots in the city of Houston. Our nursing homes, people who are in jails, and then our homeless shelters. So today in that 183 number, 77 are coming from our homeless shelters. We're adding one new person, one person to our to people who have died as a result of COVID-19. That would bring the count up in the city of Houston uh, to 125. Relatively speaking to other cities across the country, that number is still comparatively low. So we're adding one person who has passed away. That happens to be a person in her 60s, a white uh, female with no underlying medical conditions, conditions, and she died on May the 13th. So that, is, that person has been added. Please bear in mind that of the 125 people who have died uh, in the city of Houston, 27 of them are coming from our nursing homes and three of them are coming from the Harris County, Harris County Jail. So let me just say a big thank you. And let me bring up, let me bring up, first let me bring up uh, Pastor Connie Jackson and then uh, followed by Ricky Smith. Pastor Connie Jackson. Thank you, Mayor Turner. Uh, what an honor it is to one, uh, be situated in your, in your backyard. And then we wanna certainly thank Brother Ricky Davis, amen, for bringing his operation and all of his connectedness. Uh, here. We're just happy to host it. Our volunteers are happy uh, to be here to help package up everything and then distribute. Uh, we're going to be in this a long time, so we just want to thank all the benefactors uh, for being so gracious, and hopefully we can continue to do this until we're all the way out of danger. So thank you for the privilege. Thank you. And then uh, Ricky, Ricky is, uh, I mean, uh, just a superb athlete, uh, a basketball player. You know, he and I played together for a number of years. Um, <laughs> he was small guard. <laughs> well, no, I, I, woke up, I woke up from my dream. Yeah. And <laughs> but yeah. appreciate you, man. Love you. Come on, man. Definitely. Thank you. Definitely. I just want to say thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, thank you, Pastor. For, for having the opportunity to be able to serve. Um, you know, with the Ricky Davis Legacy Foundation, uh, we just want to be that pillar in the community. Um, you know, due to the pandemic, um, it's a lot of unfortunate situations. So we just want to be that pillar in the community that uh, someone can depend on and help them with the things they need. Thank you, Mayor. I also want to acknowledge Larry, who's here with Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, Janice Weaver, my, my community faith-based coordinator. Janice, thank you so very, very much, and all of my team. If there are any questions, I will take them right quick. Sure, they send me a few. And that is, have you heard from uh, HPD about last night first opening of bars? What kind of reports have you heard? Well, basically, you know, uh, by and large, I think uh, the, uh, the numbers were, were somewhat tapped down. 
There were some where people were, you know, exceeding their, exceeding their numbers. Again, that's why we want to remind people that this virus has not disappeared. So this is one of those times as things start to open up, people are going to have to self-police themselves. And I certainly want to encourage businesses to adhere to the requirements. And so uh, don't bring in people that exceed your, if you're a bar, a club, uh, that 25%, people still need to engage in social distancing. And, as, and people need to still uh, have on their masks. I know it's very difficult to do that when you're in a restaurant. So that's understandable. But what I would tell people, like I said before, if you go into some establishment and you see that it's crowded and people are not engaged in social distancing and it's dangerous, you can exercise your individual choice by stepping out and going someplace else, especially for this Memorial Weekend. But please bear in mind the virus is still here. Uh, yesterday, for example, the uh, day before yesterday, one of, one of my closest friends, somebody that I've known for a long time, someone who was in my wedding, uh, he died, you know, uh, as, a result of this, as a result of this virus. So it is very real, and it has no respect of person, doesn't care what your label is, doesn't care what your social economic status is. If you don't engage in um, safety precautions, you can be impacted, and so let's just be mindful as things continue to, to open up. That same message for the churches, there's a lot of pressure for churches to open up, I'm saving from the president, that's the same safety. Well, look, I, I will agree with the president, and, and, and churches are essential. There's no question about that. Churches are essential. There is no way I could be doing my job without my, without my faith. So I don't separate that. But that also means is that we can still engage in, in safety procedures and safe, uh, 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 social distancing, so to speak, wearing the face coverings. But let me, let me, let me yield to, to Pastor Connie Jackson. I think, you know, she's a pastor. She's right here at St. John's. Um, you you want to address that? Sure. Sure. Uh, the church has always been essential. Uh, the church is not closed. We've never closed. The church is not a building. The church, for those of us who are Christians, the church resides in us. And so for St. John uh, Northwest Church, we are not opening until science uh, and our spiritual understanding uh, tells us to. Uh, we have many seniors in our congregation. We have many young people in our congregation. And so what I would implore all of you to do uh, is to worship in your homes. Because here's the truth. We're coming upon Pentecost, Mayor. And the truth of the matter is the first churches were in homes. And so guess what, where we are now? We're worshiping in our homes, going back to our original roots. So stay home, stay safe. If you have to get out, mask up. Wash and pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Sorry, Mary. One thing from Telemundo. Yes. Uh, testing sites. Will there be an announcement for more additional? In fact, yes. Uh, we said that by before the end of this month, we would be up to 24 testing sites. I think based on the report that I got yesterday from my team and from the health department, that we really will be up to 27. We're going to list each one of those 27 testing sites in the city of Houston. So, um, and that's the other thing. As we test more, we, we anticipate there being more positive cases. So that's not a bad thing. It's important for people to know whether or not they're infected with the virus so that they don't continue to spread it to other people. So let me encourage people to be tested. I got tested. It's a painless process. It doesn't take very long. And then I want to add to Pastor County Jackson. Uh, quite frankly, with what's taking place out here with Ricky Davis and his, and his uh, foundation and what St. John's uh, Northwest is doing, the church, this is the church in action. This is the church in motion right now, okay? And, uh, you know, two or three are gathered. He'll be right there. So, uh, I mean, so I just want to, I want to amplify what Pastor Jackson said. The church is not the building, okay? It's not the building. You don't have to go to, I mean, God will be wherever you are. Quite frankly, he's right where we are today, okay? So we're two or three together. So let me just say that, and I'm especially sensitive to many of our seniors and people with underlying medical conditions.